Greetings, it is I, the Great One himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com on the interwebs, here with a very short anarchy moment, because I'm busy creating value for other people, and really short on time. I talked some odd episodes ago about watching a DVD video series, Journey of the Universe, which was statism masquerading as science. And the first two CD, bleh, the first two DVDs of the series were fairly science-based and interesting. I took some time away from it because the chick who's hosting it, Mary Evelyn Tucker, is the ugliest, just snaggletooth person I've ever seen in my life, and I can't stand listening to her or seeing her. Anyhow, I'm back. I'm on disc three, and the first interview of disc three is a black guy blaming everything that's ever happened in the history of the universe on white people. And then the second one, which I'm going to talk about very briefly here, which I'm in the process of watching, is a white liberal Democrat talking about city planning. Now, you left-wing statists love city planning. You love to be able to imagine that you can plan a city Right, And people are going to go where you want them to go. Like You're going to put houses here, and you're going to put a business here, and you're going to put a supermarket here. And you would love to believe that the people who live in those houses are going to work at that business that's across the street and shop at the supermarket that's on the other block. And it just never occurs to you that other people sometimes are not going to want to do what you want them to do. This is just completely fucking beyond your ability to understand as a motherfucking statist. So the idiot in this interview is saying the usual typical left-wing city planning statist shit just like this. But at one point, he said something that's fairly astute and brilliant. He's talking about automobiles. And of course, left-wing statists always want to get rid of automobiles. I've talked about this ad nauseum in the past. You know, this was one of the things that allowed the governments of the Soviet Union and communist Germany, what do you call it, East, East Germany, to control their citizens the way they did, is that most people didn't have automobiles, and so in order to travel around, you had to use public transportation. Public transportation, of course, creates a choke point. I give you airports. Right? Airports, public transportation, it's this choke point where everybody that goes through can be screened. And this is, governments love public transportation because it's a way for them to make sure people don't move around from one place to another without permission from the government. So the left-wing statist is going off about automobiles and how we have to get rid of them to save cities. And certainly, everything he's saying is not invalid. I mean, are cities too big? Are cities fucked up? Do cities have a lot of pavement? Do cities not have enough nature in them? Yes, to all of this stuff. Of course, you can't fix a lot of these problems because of building codes, because of the government, because of zoning, yada, yada, yada. I don't want to go into extended. I want to get to the point of the relevant shit that he said. So he's talking about how we have to get rid of automobiles and do more walking and more bicycling and more public transportation, which I personally am completely in favor of walking and bicycling. You know my opinion on public transportation. Public transportation is for cattle and slaves and the 99%. All right. He, first of all, he made an interesting point, which I agree with. He said that the environmentalists think that they are saving the earth by pushing for hybrid and electric cars, when in fact they're not, because, and I've pointed out before how your hybrid car needs all these giant batteries that are made with heavy rare elements that are mined in Africa by slave labor and extracted from the ore by using toxic chemicals, but never mind that, it's all about how you feel. He made another perfectly relevant point that hadn't consciously come to my mind before. You can have as many electric automobiles as you want, you still need the same infrastructure of roads and asphalt and parking garages and parking places and all of the other shit, just like you need for a gasoline automobile. So a hybrid or an electric automobile isn't doing that much to change things. 
We all know, again, we all know the point of a Prius. The Prius is so you can feel good about destroying the environment because you're a low-life piece of shit, right? We all know that. You know that. I know that. Everybody who owns a Prius knows why you own a Prius because you're a piece of shit. Everybody who doesn't own a Prius knows why other people own Priuses because they're pieces of shit. It's just like why people own Hummers, which in the military we never called them Hummers. Thank you. I mean, what the fuck do you need a Hummer for unless you're actually driving in the woods? If you're driving a Hummer down the fucking road, you're, you're not... You're, you're just the opposite end of the idiot spectrum, just like a Prius driver. A Prius driver and a Hummer driver think that they are worlds apart. The two of you are, in fact, exactly the same asshole. You're exactly the same fucking asshole. Now, that's me drinking coffee. The next thing he said, and this this was pretty telling, and this will make this fit in with the Stating the Obvious series I'm currently doing, which I will get back to next week, I hope, cross fingers, if I get some fucking breathing time. You know, because I'm busy working for other people, creating value, instead of waiting for a welfare check to show up, like you 99 fucking percenters. Anyway, he said, this. Is, he told this story of when he was riding in a taxi in, I think it was India, and he's talking to the taxi driver, and the taxi driver's like, what do you do? And he says, I plan cities, you know, I plan environmentally friendly cities and that don't use automobiles, you know, and all this other stuff. And the taxi driver said to him, well, if I don't have a car, how am I going to get a woman? And of course, that would be politically correct to say it that way in the United States, but you can say it that way in India because they're a third world country and every bad thing over there is the fault of the white patriarchy heterosexual men in the United States who actually work for a living. But this taxi driver and, and the guy who's being interviewed pointed out that this taxi driver brings up a good point. I mean, we live in a society where there is this social pressure. And gee, boy, I've never talked about this before, have I? There's a social pressure. Aaron Clary's never talked about this before, has he? No, of course not. Don't go to his YouTube channel, Aaron Clary, and whatever you do, don't search for you know a video entitled something along the lines of don't buy fancy cars to impress girls. Whatever you do, don't do that. Nobody's ever talked about this before. There's a lot of social pressure in our society to buy fancy automobiles in order to have sex with women. And why is this true? Well, because women choose to have sex with men who have fancy automobiles. It's like in the one rap song. I want to say, because I fucked up my rap songs lately, you guys all know this, when I said that you can't make a hoe a housewife was said by Tupac, when in fact you can't make a hoe a housewife is actually a quote from a Dr. Dre song. I think it's a Dr. Dre song, but I could be wrong, where the guy says, and I quote, whatever happened to falling in love with a nigger with a bus pass, unquote. And this is a fact, right? Women do not want to fuck men who ride bicycles. Well, some women do. Here in Fort Collins, women with the hairy armpits want to fuck men with bicycles, but we're talking about normal women, normal women who bathe and groom themselves and stuff. Women do not want to have sex with men who ride the bus. Women want to have sex with men who drive fancy automobiles. And as long as that's true, men are going to strive to buy and drive fancy automobiles. Now, I'm not a feminist. I'm not trying to place the blame for everything on women the way women place the blame for everything on men. I'm saying this is a factor. You've got two sides here. You've got women have to give up their attachment to always wanting to fuck somebody with a nice car. Men have to give up their attachment to buying fucking expensive automobiles in order to have sex with shallow women. But the fact that this left-wing statist actually had the spinal column to just even bring that up as a talking point in the interview is something that I give him credit for because most people would be absolutely fucking terrified to even say that. So, again, I've talked about this over and over and over. You women who claim you care so much about the fucking environment, you can affect more changes to 
the way resources are used, like fossil fuels and gasoline and all this other shit, you can affect more changes to the world by simply making choices about who you spread your legs for and who you don't spread your legs for than the state ever can. Because, and let's be honest here, virtually everything in the history of the planet Earth that has been accomplished by the human species has been accomplished by men. Men have done almost every single bit of accomplishment. I know that hate hurts your fucking feelings, but I don't care. It's the truth. Men are ultimately motivated by one thing more than anything else in the world. Pussy. And who has the pussy? You girls do. When you fucking learn that ultimately everything that happens is happening to make you happy, that might change your perspective a little bit. And by the way, wax your fucking mustache and maybe men would be more attracted to you.